Whippy. What basketball position should you play? I'm Tony. Welcome back to Street Ball Strategy. to be talking. Anytime the comments is just see thinking nauseous. I'm a Hamid Ali time ready, Michael Jordan. Every single day I play, I gotta put my all in. Any question asked, let the actions do the talking. So what you call it? Today we're talking about what position on the court you should play as a basketball player. But of course, this is a street ball channel and just my definition of street ball, when I'm talking about that, I don't mean like the traditional like and one kind of street ball. What I mean is just like you're a player who loves basketball and you're trying to be the best basketball player you can be. So you're putting a whole lot of time and effort into doing so, but you're not really interested necessarily in playing organized basketball. So you're not trying necessarily to make your high school team or go to college or even become a pro. Like you can have those aspirations, but this and, and any content on this channel is applicable to any organized basketball player. But the channel is intended for those of us who play basketball at your local park, but you take it super seriously. And when it comes to playing out here at the park, usually standard traditional basketball positions don't usually apply. Now maybe if you play ball in a super, like a major city, a busy, well-populated basketball city, maybe your local parks are always packed and maybe you get a lot of five on five action. And so in those situations, maybe actual basketball positions are applicable. But I think for most of us, at least the majority of us who are in smaller towns where courts are not quite as packed as often, we find ourselves playing two on two, three on three much more often. And in those situations, basketball positions are not really necessary. But either way, it can be fun, it can be interesting to at least think about and try to define what position you would play if you were playing traditional or even organized five on five basketball. So today we're gonna to talk about what position you should play and how to determine that. So for those of you beginners who may not yet be very familiar with the basketball positions, there are five of them. And in terms of talking about going from the players that play on the perimeter, going towards the players that play more towards the basket, you have the point guard, right? Who is playing furthest from the basket, right? You have the two guard, the shooting guard. Then you have the small forward at the three. You have the power forward at the four and you have the center at the five. Traditionally, usually, like the one plays farthest from the basket, the five, the center plays closest to the basket. Also, do not box yourself into the mindset that you have to be a certain height to play a certain position because normally, right, and it makes sense that the taller you are, the closer you would play to the basket. And that makes sense. And most of the time, that's the way it goes. But you don't have to be a certain height to play a certain position. Ideally, the, your performance is going to determine what position you play. So if you happen to be a shorter player, but you're a great rebounder, and you're a better rebounder than some taller players, then in that instance, then you as a shorter player should be the rebounder for your team, even though you're a shorter player. I just bring that up to say that don't think that because you're a certain height, whatever it is, that that means you have to play a certain position. Usually the taller you are, the closer you play to the basket, but it does not have to be like that. So now when it comes to determining what position you, could, you should play for those five positions, if this is point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center, usually pretty easy to determine whether or not you should either be a point guard or a center because those players jobs are very well defined if you like to set up the offense right you'd like to have the ball in your hand you like to be at the top of the floor away from the basket you like seeing the floor seeing your teammates seeing the defense right reading plays setting people up for plays by passing them the ball. If that's what you like, if that's what comes natural to you, then you're probably a point guard. On the opposite end of the spectrum, if you like being near the basket, if you like scoring at the basket, if you like defending around the basket, you're probably more likely to be a center. But it's the three positions in between those two that take a little bit more nuance to decide what position you should play and why. So now let's try to define what those positions do to help you decide which position you should play. 
shooting guard seems like a very obvious choice, a very obvious position if you like shooting. So if you're a shooter, right, and you like scoring the ball from a shooting position, shooting the ball around or near the perimeter, then you're probably apt to be a shooter. That's obvious, but however, don't think that that's all there is to being a shooting guard. You're not just a shooting guard for the sake of shooting. There's a very specific reason as to why you're supposed to shoot. You're shooting so that you can stretch the defense out. So for those of beginners of you that don't understand yet, right? If you don't have shooters on your team, if there's not players on your team that can shoot from mid range, at least out to the perimeter, then there would be no reason for the defense to ever leave the paint area, right? Because if your team can't shoot, if the only way they can score is to go to the basket and try to get layups, then why should the defense ever leave around the basket? Obviously, they can't just park themselves, you know, at in the paint because that would be five seconds. But when you're talking about out here at the park, nobody ever calls five seconds anyway. So if you're, if you're playing out here at the park and you don't have any shooters on your team, then why should the defense ever leave the paint? They would just wait for you down there and contest you whenever you get close to the basket. And if you're playing organized basketball, then they'll just, they'll just wait just outside of the paint because, and they're not gonna guard you because they, if you can't shoot and they know it, they're not gonna leave the paint. They're, not, they're gonna stand right on the lines, on the key, right? And they're gonna stand there and wait for you to shoot and miss and get rebounds and not guard you, because why should they if they don't have to? So it's the shooter, the two guard, the shooting guard, it's their responsibility to keep the defense honest, to stretch out the defense, stretch the defense away from the paint, so that when now the defense is guarding each individual player, especially the shooter, right? Now you're spacing the floor, you're creating passing lanes and cutting lanes for your teammate. So if you like to shoot and you like to draw a defender to you so that they have to defend you, creating space between your teammates and the basket, then you're probably apt to be a shooting guard. Also, obviously, you have to be good at shooting <laughs> to be a shooting guard, so keep that in mind as well. Now, when we talk about a small forward playing the three position, to me, that's probably the most interesting basketball position there is because the three doesn't necessarily have anything that they are a master of, right? They don't have any real speciality. We'll get to a possible speciality in a second, but overall in general, the three is kind of there to help out wherever needed. The small forward has to be good at passing the ball, at shooting the ball, at getting rebounds, right? They have to be able to help out on the court wherever they're needed. So if you're the kind of player who doesn't really have a strong speciality, you just like to do a little bit of everything on the court, uh, then you're probably more apt to be a small forward. As far as power forwards go, they have a very crucial job in terms of supporting the center on their team. And that's not to downgrade or to take away from how important a power forward can be. It's just that your center on your team, right, they have a very effort and energy intensive job, especially if you're playing full court, like organized basketball, because not only does the center have to run up and down the court, but every time down the court, they're either wrestling on defense or offense. That's very taxing in terms of your energy. So as a power forward, a huge part of your job is to take away the rebounding duties from your center so that he doesn't have to expend uh, extra energy trying to chase rebounds. He can focus on defending and scoring. So as the power forward, you're the primary rebounder for your team. Now, obviously there's all kinds of exceptions that can be made and you know, instances, but traditionally, the power forward is the designated rebounder, meant to get as many rebounds as possible to save the center on offense and defense so that they have more uh, energy and effort going towards defending and scoring. Also, since you're the power forward and you're down near the basket with the center, that means you're probably the closest teammate in proximity to that center. So. 
if your center gets double teamed while they're trying to score, that probably means that your defender is gonna leave you to go to the center and double team the center, meaning you're gonna be open. When that happens, it's your job, it's your responsibility to get in the best scoring position possible so that the center can pass the ball to you and you can score easily. So if that sounds like your game, like what you naturally like to do on the court, you like to rebound and you like to support your bigger guys on the court down low towards the basket, then you're probably more apt to be a power forward. That's what basketball position you should play. And lastly, when we think about what basketball position you should play in terms of the team sport of basketball, I think it's good to keep in mind and to like constantly remind yourself that because this is a team sport, the position that you play is meant to help your teammates. So, if, so for instance, if you're a point guard, right, the way your position as a point guard helps the teammates around you, the other positions, is that the point guard has a very unique point of view, right? They're probably around the top of the key. They can see all of their teammates, and more importantly, they can see the defense defending their teammates. So they can then decide what place to run and when in order to take advantage of whatever positions the defense happens to be in. By, by making that decision, that's how the point guard helps out his teammates. In terms of shooting guards, the way the shooting guard helps their teammates is by spreading the floor, making sure the defense stays honest so that they don't just crowd around the basket. Also, the shooting guard takes the scoring load off of the rest of the team and takes the shooting responsibility into their own hands, literally. Again, the small forward is kind of a utility player, right? They're kind of like the free safety on a basketball team for both offense and defense. So they do whatever needs to be done in terms of help and assistance whenever they see it. It's the power forward's job to help the team by primarily helping the center by taking away the, the rebounding duties from the center. But also usually the power forward is one of the bigger guys on the team. So when it comes to helping to set picks and you know being sort of physically imposing on the other team, the power forward helps out in that way as well. And then of course, the center helps out the team by shouldering the load of scoring near the basket and defending the other team's biggest player. And if the center does a good enough job, he will draw double teams in on offense to double team him. And then on defense, if he does a good enough job, he, the, uh, the rest of the team won't need to double team on defense, meaning you don't then have defensive gaps because the center is doing his job defending one and one around the basket. That means it helps the rest of the team so they're not scrambling on defense. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, if you think it's gonna help you to understand the different positions in basketball and how to play them and what position you should choose for yourself, then please subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you hit that thanks button down below. When you do that, any comments you make to let me know what position you play and how you chose it and all of that, any, any comment you make is all highlighted down below and when you hit that button, it also directly supports the channel. So you're not only are you going to be supporting the channel, not only are your comments going to stand out below, but it helps me out. I really, really appreciate that. As always, like, share, comment, like I said, hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever any video goes live on this channel. And until then, I will see you guys next week. A hundred every action is the move. Every holiday, every caption, every move. They say passion don't mean talent, that ain't true Cause talent is developed once passion is pursued Key is to be willing to be eager Always be the student, not the teacher Couple rules when you strive to be a leader Know that every dream starts with a dreamer Keep it honorable Any moves, nothing less than remarkable Make it to the point we get it jumping like it's gonna do They shook now, but they fear what I'm gonna do No way, I'ma get this far and forfeit it So a day, I'ma raise the bar on the mission Go make plays with the whole squad till we all win it That's the only way that we'll become victorious